It's Alfred. Um, welcome back to Friday Night Roguelikes. So, I'm back in browser because this is a particularly odd case. Um, it's more just a really weird, weird game. Uh, this is Hyper Rogue. And I wanted to start here because it is straight up just a little bland to look at. If you don't know. Your lone adventure in a strange world where geometry does not work in the expected way. Gather as much treasures before the nasty monsters get you. Explore 50 different worlds, each with unique treasures, enemies, and terrain obstacles. Quest to find the legendary treasure, Orbs of Yendor. That is Rodney backwards again, just like the original, I think the original Rogue. I should remember I played it. Uh, so the whole game world is hexagons and heptagons, as it says here. And it's all non-Euclidean geometry. This is so weird to look at. I played it for a couple minutes. It's just so weird to see. I, I, I don't even, I don't know what to say about it. It's just so strange. So, we can download it from the site. We can buy it on Steam, Itch.io, Google Play, or the App Store. And we can also just play it online, which I'm going to do. We'll do this. What is this, actually? Oh, Lord. Introduction. Okay. How does this look when I full screen it? Okay. Whoa. Ooh. Okay. Ice diamond. This trip should be worth it. All right. Let's just check to see how this, how this actually looks. So, as it happens, it looks great, which is good. Full screen. All right. So as you can see, it's you cannot move through the ice wall. It's really, really weird looking. This is actually kind of giving me a headache. Oh, uh, oh, we got an enemy, a Yeti. That makes sense. The Yeti would kill you there. So you can be killed very easily. You kill the Yeti. That was easy, but groups could be dangerous. Um, the game will uh, go out of its way to stop you. For now, collect as much treasure as possible. The game will go out of its way to stop you if you... Oh, that's so weird. Just look at... Like, look at how the world twists and shifts. Ice Diamond. Prove yourself here, then find new lands with new quests. See, the game will go out of its way to stop you if you're going to kill yourself. You feel that with each icy... You feel that the icy land becomes more dangerous with each ice diamond you collect. Like, just look at this. Ugh, ugh. Yeti on the other side of the wall. Oh, just... it's It twists and churns. Oh, man. There's a lot of them, huh? Bip, bip. Ice wolves, huh? So you have to really maneuver yourself. Icy land. A very cold land full of ice walls. Your mere presence will cause the ice walls to melt even if you don't want it. Interesting. Rogue. A tourist from another world. They mutter something about the tutorial and claim they're here to learn and leave without any treasures. Don't kill them. Ice Wolf, a nasty predator from the Icy Land. Contrary to other monsters, it tracks prey by their heat. That's cool. Uh, big and quite intelligent monster living in the Ice Land. Ice Diamond, cold white gems found in Icy Land. Orb Unlock, the Orb of Flash, native to the Icy Land. Secondary Orb, Orb of Winter. Interesting. Are there any magical orbs in the icy land? If the icy land slowly becomes dangerous. Better find some other place. All right, got those guys off my back. Oh yeah, look, I'm actually like heating it up, and I can just wait by clicking. That's so interesting. 
<sighs> okay, I'm preparing my stomach to just go here. Like, look at how the world swirls and churns. And of course, this is randomly generated. So I thought the red was like how the ice wolves are tracking me. And I, I guess it is. Oh, that's so weird. Just even the shape that this world is made out of is just like the ice diamond. Living cave. Guided tour is different from other game tutorials. Not forced to do anything. Go wherever you want. Living cave is not what we're talking about right now. We will not explain the land. You could get lost there. You can advance to the next slide by pressing enter. Tour will not advance on its own. You'll have to press enter while not reading help text. So on like straightaways, you can get away, but the, oh jeez. Orb of Flash. I found the Orb of Flash. Orb can be used to invoke a flash spell. Destroys everything in a radius of two. Orb is triggered on your first attack or illegal move. Interesting. You activate the flash spell. Nice. Oh, and everything shatters. That's so cool. And it's all warm now. Interesting. So the fact that the land heats up and your heat will attract other monsters is so interesting. So what is the Yeti? Yeah, just that they're intelligent. Okay. Desert. I like deserts. Can't move through the Great Wall, naturally. Desert man. Tribe of men native to the desert. They've even tamed the huge sandworms who won't attack them. Keep opening that by mistake. Excuse me. Oh, geez. Okay. Hmm. Oh, it's so freaking weird to look at. Another orb of flash. You feel more tuned to the magic of this land. We've hit 25. So what happens if I hit enter? Game starts in the icy land. Collect the ice diamonds. Collect many of them. Monsters pose a challenge. As is typical in roguelikes and other games, based on tactical still rather than story. If you lose, you have to start from a new one. Start a new one from the start. Tutorial you can press forward to teleport away from a bad sitch. In tutorial, the rig the game the tutorial is rigged to show you what it wants. In this side, you can press five to get lots of ice diamonds quickly. Wow, you sure can. You feel you have enough treasure to access new lands. God, just the 40 chests you have to play with your own brain. Hmm. Well, thanks for lining up for me. So what does Enter do now? Hypersian Rug Model. Many players think the action of Hyper Rogue takes place on a sphere. That's not true. The next slide will show the surface Hyper Rogue actually takes place on. Use the arrow keys to rotate the model and page up and down to zoom. If you don't see anything, press 5 to try a safer render. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, my God. So I'm here. Jeez. I, I'm blown away. So can I see the desert from here? I think I might be able to. So... Are the things at the end where it connects to other ones? Oh my god. I would love to like pick this up and hold it. 
I'm on... Wait, I appear to be on both sides of this. My brain is breaking. <laughs> oh, jeez. This... Is very confusing. <laughs> uh, I've got a mirror behind my desk because, you know, I'm vain, and I can just I just looked uh, above my computer screen into my mirror, and I can see how wrinkled my forehead is. <sighs> this is, this is bananas. Oh, my wife's home. I'll be right back. My wife's fine. Um, however, my cat is uh, screaming at her because he missed her. So it'll be a little bit. I just wanted to announce that. All right. I don't know why I recorded that clip. I just I wanted to mention how my cat's a bastard. So in addition, you can still even play like this. Oh, goodness. I don't know how... Ugh, sorry. I, uh, I I was going to play some more on that, but it was breaking my brain. Whew. Next slide shows the number of cells in distance 1, 2, 3 away from you. It grows exponentially. There are more than 10 to the 100th power cells in radius 1,000 away from you, and you will f move further away during the game. This is very important in the design of Hyper Rogue. Hyper Rogue has many navigational puzzles. What would be simple in Euclidean world is extremely tricky in the hyperbolic geometry. You want to reach a specific location 20 cells away, which is the thousands of possible directions. Which of the thousand possible directions should you take? However, other things virtually impossible in Euclidean will become easy in Hyper Rogue. Hyper Rogue had to be specially designed so that it's possible to grind the infinite world. There are almost no permanent upgrades. Collecting treasures bring you benefits. But trying to get too many of the same kind is very dangerous. Okay. Oh, yeah, and it does get exponentially. Whew. Oh, yeah, there's the, there's the math. This is really cool and really weird. God, my head is shattering. Like, even if this was just a sphere, this would still be so fucking weird to play. It's breaking my computer, even. Oh, dear. Well. The Yeti would kill you there. All right. Tiling and tactics. Oh, Jesus. The tactics of fighting simple monsters such as the Yetis from the Iceland might appear shallow, but the hyperbolic geometry is essentially even there. In the next slide, you're attacked by two monsters at once. Try to make them line up by simply running away in a straight line. Press 2 to try the same in the Euclidean world. It's impossible. Okay. Running dog and goblin killed. Oh, this world type is called Canvas. Canvas, a fake land with colored floors. Technical. Oh, I should have clicked on the goblin. Like, this is a great example of what the fuck is up with this game. Just, oh my god. It's like I took a hit of acid and then someone kicked a soccer ball into my eye. Like, it's like playing a magic eye poster. While on acid. Ugh. It's so weird. Okay, return to your game. K. 
kill the Eddie. The mechanic of how the ice world heats up and cools down is so, so cool. So let's just go in here and let's see. Put yourself and find new lands with new quests. Actually, let's hit enter and see. Straight lines. Hyperbolic geometry had been discovered since the by the 19th century, by 19th century mathematicians, who wondered about the nature of paral parallelness. Take line L and a point A. Can a world exist where there is more than one line passing through A which does not cross L? I was never great at math in school. Um, math is one of the only two classes I ever failed. Actually, the other one was a uh, woodshop. The icy land will be very dangerous if you have lots of ice diamonds, lots of yetis and ice wolves hunting you. But other lands where you have no treasures will still be relatively straight. Wander further and you should find crossroads quickly. The great walls are straight lines. They are? That's... Oh my god, it's so freaking confusing. Oh. <sighs> Indeed, they work differently than in Euclidean. On the other sides of Great Walls, you see other lands. There's about 60 lands in Hyper Rogue based off different mechanics and aspects of hyperbolic geometry. Oh, God. Who are you? Rock Troll. Big monster from the Living Caves. Dead Troll be reunited with rocks, causing walls to grow around its body. Whoa, that's really cool. Oh, yeah, wow, it just becomes a new thing. Freakish. So you got to be strategic about where you actually move. The living cave, huh? It's so weird. Like, I'm, I'm playing the tutorial of a game. It's a very simple game. Like, Crossroads. Oh my god, these are supposed to be fucking straight lines. Huge impassable walls which separate various lands. Keep opening your help, sorry. So what's even in here? Graveyard. Ancient graves. A necromancer's totem. Necromancer raises some undead. Fresh grave. Necromancers like those. An ancient grave. Have I gone into what passes for a circle? Dry forest. Oh, trees you can chop down. That's interesting. Oh, and now he can't get through because... Hedgehog warrior. Oh, you have to get around them. That's interesting. And something of a pickle. Hmm. Well, here I am again. All right, let's... Running dogs. To learn more about straight lines, wander further, and you should find the land of eternal motion. Try to run in a straight line, and the running dog will appear next to you. Even though the running dog runs at the same speed as you, it'll appear to go slower, because it, you're running in a straight line, and the running dog has to run in a curve called an equidistant. You can right-click on anything to get more information. Oh, cool. So can I get out of here? Huh. So yeah, you have to like sideswipe them. That's interesting. That's really weird. Warriors of the weapon wield exotic weapons called hedgehog blades. Protect them from a frontal attack, but they can be stabbed easily by moving to one place next to them. Oh, God, it's so... Oops.
Nine of eternal motion. Here we go. Okay. So running in a straight line. White dog is able to rerun all the time. It's the only creature able to survive and breed in the land of eternal motion. Land where you can't stop because every piece of floor is unstable. Only monsters who can run forever are able to survive there. Only phoenix feathers are so light they don't disturb the floor. Oh my god, I'm losing my fucking mind. It was a floor until something walked on it. So this means that you can actually kind of box the dogs in almost. Yeah, see, now that one can't get to me. Though, I've been replaced with this dog. Oh my lord. All right, got a phoenix feather. Oh, jeez. This reminds me of a like Samurai Jack Flash game I used to play on like CartoonNetwork.com. Not this part, just specifically the running over chasms that collapse. Oh my god, okay. Equidistance of curves, which are fixed distances from a straight line. Ooh, some lands in Hyper Ogre are based on equidistance. You should see them after wandering more. Tutorial gives you freedom to go wherever you choose, but we don't recommend going to the dungeon in the ocean. Getting back might be difficult. Okay. So I don't suppose I can get out of here. Oh, running dog fell. Oh. Shut up, me. Yendorian Forest. Trunk. Oh, sweet Jesus. Gravity does not allow this. I'm on the surface of a... Yendorian Researcher. These people study gravity and infinite trees. They have no special features other than wearing a strange hat. Skeleton of a tree. That's funny. Weak branch. Branches here will bear your weight, but if you use them to move, not fall to an unstable place, they will break. The forms were planted by one of the wizards from the ivory tower to construct experiments with gravity, which was required 10 ivory figurines. And there are sparrow hawks here as well as the other ones. Okay, living cave, been in there. Alchemist lab. Wrong color. Alchemists produce magical potion from pools of red and blue sun. You go through these pools, but can't move from a blue to a red or vice versa. Pools containing items kind of is colorless. They change color to the PC's previous color when the item is picked up. Slime bees have to keep their own color, but when they're killed, they explode, destroying items and change the color of the slime and beasts around them. Uh, featuring Slime Beast. The guy who writes those creepypastas? Indoor Enforce. Don't get me the fuck out of there. Ivory Tower. Gravity does not allow this. So this is another one where gravity exists in, in a way. A gargoyle being made of stone who likes high buildings comes to normal stone when killed, but only if next to something stable. Otherwise, it falls. I'm going to... Circles are strange in hyperbolic geometry, too. Oh, look for the castle of Camelot in the crossroads. The round table inside is a circle of radius 28. Finding the center is a difficult challenge. Press 5 to cheat by seeing the smaller circles. Camelot and some other lands are... Unlocked earlier in the tutorial. Okay. Oh, cool. 
ocean. 21 turns, so it must be deeper. Or less deep. Jungle. I think I looked in there. Yep, here we go. Cannot move through the moat of Camelot. Oh, man. Having a landmark makes this weirder to see. Oh, my God. Just look at how it... Look how it feels to get around it. Knights of the Round Table are the greatest warriors of these lands. They're not invented other names. They call each of the castles Camelot. Probably worthy of joining, but they will give you a quest. Each castle contains a single treasure holy grail. Radius of the Round Table is usually 28, but after you find a holy grail, each new castle and round table will be bigger. Psycho Panda 1, 2, 1, the night. Oh, are these NPCs? That's a little unexpected. Find the Holy Grail and become one of us. Chuckle Kells, the night. Oh, Jesus. Brisingre, the night. You jump over the table. The knights wish you luck. Oh my god. Pikemen. Pikemen move. They attack all cells which are adjacent to them. They can be killed in the same way. They never move that they would attack their friends. Holy shit. Knights laugh at your failure. There was a pikeman, dude. Dickhead? Wow, I have no idea how to get in. Okay, let's just look at five. Okay. You tricked the pikeman. Okay. So you can see the concept of circles this way. Hedgehog warrior. What flail guard? Guard of the Emerald Mine is a huge flail. Can't attack him directly as the flail will still hit you. You learn a trick. If you step away from him, he'll hit himself with the flail. Oh, there it is. Holy Grail. Local treasure. Okay. You have teleported. Now get me the hell out of here. Oh, man. 28 is so much of a bigger number. The Knights congratulate you. Big extent. J. J. Pistian. Pistinen. Sprite Guard. Ooh, I need to take a break. My my head actually hurts. <laughs>all right i took a short break let's get back i'm losing my mind that this is i enjoy watching the hyperbug battles have you visited a temple in Rinle? i have actually wow i'm i'm losing my mind horosicles are similar to circles but you can't reach their center they can be understood as limit circles of infinite radius centered in some point in infinity, also called an ideal point. That makes sense. Go to Rilia. Rilia. Yeah, I am pronouncing that right. Or as far as I know. You should find a Temple of Cthulhu there. Each circle of columns is actually a horosicle. Horosicles in a given temple are concentric and there is an infinite number of them. Oh, jeez. 
My head. Really? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Got to find a way around it. Really? Yeah, tentacle. Tentacles of Cthulhu are like sandworms, but longer. They would draw one cell at a time instead of exploding instantly. I, uh... Ancient Second City, we can be reaching the stars are right. Find temples of Cthulhu, and really, I want you to find five statues. Treasure required 60 total. Okay. So I never actually went too deep into the desert. Grimoire. Big statue of Cthulhu. Push it behind me. Oh, interesting. You already have this grimoire. Oh, man. <laughs> My brain is breaking. This is just the this is just the free demo, by the way. This is the free demo tutorial that you can play on the website. Like, I assume the actual game has more shit in it. Collect your first statue of Cthulhu. Enough treasure to access new lands. Controlling it is weird. I'll be honest. Like, I I, I just so freaking strange to look at that I can't even okay so let's be real for a sec here as a game it's very very simple you click and go places the fire cultist throws fire at you oceans wait no I should not go in the ocean actually oh man Okay, let me take a let me take a second to talk about this because I am supposed to talk about the rogue like itself on the show. Oh, I just I have to I have to pause or something. So, as a game, it's very very simple. You click, and you go places. Occasionally, you get orbs that will power you up or whatever. Uh, there's not a lot of character progression. There's not even a level system as far as I can tell. Um, the art's very simplistic. But if if this game had any more to think about beyond the 4D chess you have to play just to move and fight regular enemies... Like, hexagonal movement is it's not completely new to me because i play tabletop games and hexagons are what a lot of things are based off of most people know four or eight directional movement but hexagonal movement makes sense to me septagonal movement is very very weird the both of them and like it's not even on a sphere where it's we're in complete non-euclidean space It's so, so cool to look at. Like, it's so weird. And, like, I feel like I can't even judge this as a game because this is more like an art piece. This is just so bizarre to understand. I I don't even know what to say. <laughs> like, it's Hyper Rogue. It is, you know? It exists as its, as itself. Oh, all right. Let's, let's do a little more. Game is normally played in the so-called Punkare disc model, kind of map of the infinite hyperbolic world. Many projections of Earth, but since Earth is curved, all of them have to distort distance or angles in some way. The same is true in hyperbolic geometry. Next slide shows another model called the Punkare upper half plane model. In this model, horror cycles centered on one specific ideal point are drawn as straight lines. So now circles are round. No, circles are straight. Oh my god. So this is what the world would look like if it was flat, I think? Oh, you can still turn it. Oh my god. Uh, 
Oh. Oh my god. It, it like I know that it's obvious, but like boat, huh? It really is infinite. Caribbean. There's pirates. There's little islands. This is... Thi this is so crazy. Curvature. Now go to the barrel guns to find an orb of the sword. Sword appears to be facing the same direction. Whatever you do. You have to rotate the sword, excavate the treasure. It's possible to excavate them. Notice the world rotates after you move around a loop and return to an old place. It's related to the fact that the world of Hyper Rogue is curved and the sum of angles in a triangle is not angle equal to 180 degrees. Yeah, that's true, because, you know. And yes, for those who aren't aware, triangles do, in fact, only add to 180 degrees when they're on a flat surface. The angle of a triangle, I should say. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's no there's no bet. I think that's the cross burial grounds. Here we go. I'm going to have to go around, I think. Oh, jeez. Draugr. Animated corpses of Viking warriors. Immune to mundane weapons, but can be destroyed by the orb of the sword. I never even... Dormant ivy. Huge plant growing in the jungle. Each ivy has many branches, and one branch grows per each of your moves. Branches grow in a clockwise order. The root itself is vulnerable. It's part of a monster and does not count for your total kills. I've already gotten lost. I, I am already lost. Barrel ground. Here we go. Okay. Sword. The orb of the sword, huh? Oh, I have to get the Draugr to point. I have to get him into the sword. So like this? That's so weird. And like... If this game was just like a hey, what if the what if the world was curved in such a in such a way that it looked like this? It legitimately looked like this all the time. Oh god. I just I have to I have to turn it off for a sec. I just can't. I can't, bro. <laughs> oh. Okay, yeah. It's so cool because like the the game on its own is like what if the game was a, what if the world was actually curved like this and you play you look at this strange geometric world in a top down perspective and you go through physics and and world types that are impossible in Euclidean space and that's that's cool and then they actually start to do they start to add actual game mechanics you know it's not traditionally rogue because there's no like level system I, I think that's valid to say rogue is known for having a level system it's a D, &D game um it still has the turn system and like it's just so oh it's so weird <laughs> all right hyperbolic geometry yields more interesting periodic patterns than euclidean so we're back in canvas now one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
Yeah, this is only... Each of these sides are four in length, and there's one in the middle. I think all of these are. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, in a weird way, they are. It's a little easier to see it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. And yeah, so irregularly, irregularly some of these will be... Um, Over the sword is a weapon made of pure magical energy. You do not hold it. It floats in the air next to you. When you go, energy sword moves with you, pointing the same relative angle it pointed before. Can't move or rotate otherwise. Most monsters can be killed by moving the sword into them. It won't move into the spot with a sword. So yeah, a regular. So most of these are six-sided hexagons. Uh, the other ones are si uh, seven-sided hexagons. I, I know they're called heptagons. Or septagons, if you prefer. I just, uh, I, I amused myself with my own statement of a six-sided hexagon as though there's another type. All right. Periodic patterns application. Many lands in Hyperog are based around periodic patterns. For example, zebra and winnie planes are based on the patterns shown on the previous slide. Such lands often have a tree-like nature. On the following slide, colors change smoothly in the whole infinite world. Again, this works better than the Euclidean geometry. Oh, no. Oh, look at it. It's so... It's so weird and cool. Look at how it, like, bubbles in the middle. Oh. This is this is a really unusual episode of my show. I'm totally out of my element here. Oops. Fractal landscapes application. Applied in hyperogues to create landscapes, such as the chasms and land of reptiles or the dragon chasms, which you should find quickly. Also, in the dragon chasms, you can find a baby tortoise and try to find a matching adult tortoise in the Galapagos. There are over 2 million species, but since there's so much space in hyperbolic geometry, finding a matching tortoise is possible. The brighter color, the brighter the color in Galap Galapagos is, the more aspects of the tortoise in the given area are matching. Okay, so how the hell do I get out of here then? So should I wait for this to be like behind me? So then I can get them to, like, chase themselves into the sword? No. Okay. Hunting ground. Actually, wait. Point can I dis ball model? Disc model is a model of a plane. You might wonder why the walls are in 3D. Hyperrogue assumes the floor level is an equidistant surface in a three-dimensional hyperbolic world, and the camera is placed above the plane that the surface is equidistant to, which boils down to showing the floor level in Poincaré's disc model. On the next slide, in the Poincaré ball model, which is a 3D analog of the disc model, Oh, sweet Jesus. This... I don't even understand what I'm looking at anymore. Oh, no! <laughs> no! Hyperboloid model. Let's see more models of the hyperbolic plane. This model uses a hyperboloid in the Minkowski geometry. It's used internally by Hyperrogue. Oh my fucking god. Oh. Uh, turquoise. 
You're ambushed. I slay the hunting dog, I think. Beltram Klein model. Model renders straight lines as straight, but distorts angles. Okay. Oh, and this, the world is so small you can barely see anything. Oh. Alchemist Lab. Yeah, let's hug the Great Wall because I want to see if I can find a... Uh, I want to see if I can find the crossroads again. I can't tell if I've gone around in circles. Well, you know, cir a given value of circle, obviously. <laughs> I feel like I have, but I have no idea how big this is. My normal point of reference is practically irrelevant now. Gon's model. Yet another model corresponds to orthographic projection of the sphere. Point code A disk model, Beltrami Klein, and the Gon's model are all obtained by looking at either the hyperboloid model or an equidistant service from various distances. Oh god, it's like it's it's like I'm looking at the bottom of a bowl. Like this is the bottom of a cereal bowl, but My left arm's hurting. Like, am I having a heart attack from this? Is the brain stress finally getting a hold of me? Oh. Land of eternal motion. Hunting dog fell. Oh, I'm back in the Icelands. And that's the living cave. I would love to see... I, I would love to see the map of this, but how could you even represent it? Band model. Band model is a hyperbolic analog of the Mercator, Mercator projection of the sphere. Uh which is, I believe, what most maps of the world are. Given straight line is rendered as a straight line. The rest of the world is mapped conformally. That is, angles that are not dis are not distorted. Here we are... Or no, I know what this is, yeah. Here we see the straight line connecting your starting point and your current position. Usually the path taken by the player is surprisingly close to a straight line. Press 8. If you want, press 5 to see it rendered as a spiral. And they're currently preparing the line now. Oh, man. This is such a strange episode. I'm I'm so taken aback by all of this. I've had to remember a bunch of math. Honestly, a lot of the math I'm talking about here is not math that I learned in school, which means... I hate my microphone, sorry. Um, anyway, yeah, it's not math that I'm... That I learned in school. It's math that I actually had to learn from web comics. Uh, I'm a big fan of this place called this one comic called A Regular Web Comic, um, and it deals with a lot of weird science stuff. Because for whatever reason, there is a massive what is? Well, can we can we do it as a spiral? There's a massive market for web comic authors who are uh, simultaneously also particle physicists or quantum mechanics or something like that like Andrew Hussey, David Morgan Marr Randall Monroe, Zach Wienersmith is his name Wiener or Wienersmith? the SNBC guy anyway I could go on I'm actually going to pause the recording for a second because I've been going for quite a while yeah so as it happens I was actually uh that was the end of the tutorial. Um, 
My wife just said, mm-hmm, like I'm talking to her. <laughs> yeah, as it says here, you can download it. It'll run a little better. Um, there's better controls. Special modes. Oh, man, that's so cool. And then it's also on Steam. It's on Itch.io. This is a really interesting game. This is fascinating. I... I normally I would just take a bunch of attempts, but like it's so weird and strange to look at. <laughs> so there's 72 lands in the free version. Wow! And the ultimate the ultimate Hyperstone quest requires you to get 10 treasures each land. Um, yeah, it plays much more like a board game. Oh. Make the game look differently. Oh, you can play it just in Hypersian Rug mode. That's interesting. Yeah, great game, educational thing, or maybe an artistic or research tool. Yeah, that's almost how I feel more about it. Because as a game, it's very simple. Um, it's just like a board game. But it... Oh, it's, oh, it's so weird to look at. Yeah, free version, uh, paid versions are updated more frequently, include social features such as achievements and leaderboards. Um, so let's so let's take a look at these just because I I can't, I don't know if I can play it for myself. So Escher, Plane, Escher 3D, Plane 3D, Black and Grid, and then ASCII. That's cool. That makes it a little more classic. Basic lands. Icy land, we saw this. Living cave. Desert. I didn't even go in here. I was so interested, but I never went. Land of Eternal Motion. That place is so weird. That that place is like the, the place where physics problems are written, you know? Like, assuming that there's no atmosphere and gravity is 10 times Earth's rate, how long would it take for an anvil to drop? You know, it's like that kind of place. Jungle. I didn't look in the Alchemist Lab too much. It looks so cool, but it's so... It's such a weird mechanic to walk around in it. Um, hubs. Crossroads. There's multiple crossroads! Intermediate lands. Hall of Mirrors. Oh, man. I already feel myself puking in there. Yandorian Forest. So you can explore the forest a little more. I didn't, but it has a different view of gravity that the normal world does because you're not top down there. Minefield. That ought to be fun. Palace, Zebra, and Ivory Tower. Oh. Overseas. So I didn't even look at any of these. Really, it kind of counts, but not really, really. Warped Coast, Kraken Depths, and then Special Lands. Dry Forest, Vineyard, Winnie Plains, Land of Storms, Rose Garden. Advanced Lands 1 and 2, Dead Cave, Red Rock Valley, Overgrown Woods and Clearing, Dragon Gasms, Block Quikos. My brain is literally melting. Like, right now, it's happening live on stream. Trollheim. I went to Burial Grounds. I did Camelot, actually. That was fun. And then Endgame Lands. Hell, Cositus, and Land of Power. And then Bonus Lands. Wild West, Halloween, Docks. I actually saw Docks while I was looking around. Snake Nest, Crystal World. Reptiles. Oh my god. It it looks like um indigenous Native American art. Like the, the kind of stuff that they found in Mexico. Not quite like Mayan and Aztec stuff. Not like the pre-Columbian things. Um, or like Aboriginal cave paintings. That's so... Oh, and then Dungeon. I remember mentioning them. Mountain, Prairie, Bull Dash, Crossroads 5, Volcanic Wasteland. Oh, that must be a nightmare, just having lava dealing with it. Terracotta Army, that's cool. Winter of the Hunting Grounds. Oh, Blizzard looks like a nightmare to even look at. Jelly Kingdom, Ruined City, Brown Island, Free Fall, and Irritated, F Irritated Field, rather. Special Modes, Yandor Challenge, Pure Tactics Mode, Princess Challenge, Heptagonal mode. Oh, all heptagons. I guess that would force it to be um, a, a, a specific shape then, because it would have to be heptagonal. Sorry, I forget that not everyone's a D and D nerd like I am. No, so it wouldn't be like this. I'm not even sure what I would look for. Uh, 
What's the 3D equivalent of a heptagon? Heptagonal prism, yeah. No, wait. This is a heptagonal prism. I want a 3D heptagon. Like the difference between a cube, a square, and a rectangular prism. This is... I'm getting out of... All right. Shmup mode. Oh, and it's even cooperative? Chaos mode? Random patterns? The map editor? <laughs> this is Euclidean mode. That's funny. Peaceful mode? That's cool. Racing mode? And then alternative display. And you can play in all these modes. Playing a Hypergian rug is kind of interesting. I would like a... Oh, man. Definitely valid that they keep some of these in the... In the paid vo in the paid one. This is a really... Like, I'm, I'm not even sure what to say, you know? Like... As a roguelike, it's very, very simple. Um, playing it like a like a video game equivalent of a board game makes it a little more valid to play. Holy shit, it's so weird and fun just on that merit alone, you know? It's so... Whoa, dude. <laughs> like, I kind of just want to get fucked up and, and play this game or rewatch my video. That seems like the most fun thing to do with this, right? Or, like, you could go and teach a high school class. Hopefully, we'll not fucked up. Ideally, you know. You could go teach a high school class or even a college course on geometry with this. This game is probably going to be how I explain non-Euclidean world types to people. Um, I, I know a lot of people who are fans of H.P. Lovecraft. Um, you know, not fans of him, but fans of the ideas that he came up with that... People then quickly, swiftly, inevitably did better than he did. Because, um, you know, to be clear here, we do not stand a classist or racist. H.P. Lovecraft was a fuck. Uh, but a lot of my friends are way more into the, like, Bloodborne side of the of the Cthulhu mythos. Like, the the focus on humans and, and weird alien gods. I definitely love the alien space the alien geometry that comes into play um and granted that comes around because uh lovecraft was so stupid he didn't understand math that's a real thing this is a real quote yeah what's so fighting about non-euclidean <laughs> was he good at math uh, do, 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 do. It sounds weird to make you think it's a messed up looking buildings. Uh, yeah, isn't non-Euclidean just like a specific type of curve? <sighs> How would the Bible read if written by H.P. Lovecraft? Yeah, here it is. This is the quote. T he was deemed to have too delicate of a constitution for math. dickhead absolute fool wow is this a roguelike because i may have on my next video nah last week i did uh skeletris um this week i did a really weird one next week i will do a more maybe not traditional one maybe i'll keep pushing it you know because for the first two weeks, I did uh, Rogue and Moria. And then week four was... Oh, God, what was week four? I'm stupid. Please help me. I'm literally looking at my own playlists. Week four was Angband. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to play one that's more of a D&D &D game next week. Uh we'll definitely see how it goes. But yeah, this was this is a lot of fun and I keep saying this. I I I I don't know what else to say. Very simple game. 
Oh my God. It's so weird to play. It is so weird to play. It is so weird. I can't, I can't say anything else. I am, I am completely blowing my own job here to say things about games because I just, I can't handle it. It's so cool. It's such an awesome idea. This, like, as a roguelike, and as a game, very simple, but these games don't need to be complex. And as a art piece, it is brilliant. This is an absolutely great game. Definitely support the developers, unless there's just one developer, in which case support them in the singular. Um, play it yourself. You can play the free version. It's right now, and it runs in your friggin' browser. Uh, Hyper Rogue. The, oh, this is a this is a real good one.